Hey, Desmond Du here from No Sleep Creative. Today we'll learn how to create this speedy scene from Flat White Motion TEDx Boundary Animation. We'll be using the Trap Code Particular Plugin from Red Giant. If you're a student, you can get a free educational license with a small processing fee from Maxon. It also comes with access to Cinema 40, Red Giant plugins, Red Shift Renderer, and even Cineversity. Also, another thing to keep in mind about this tutorial is that I'm still using version 4 of Trap Code Particular instead of the new version that recently came out. I did try it, but I'm not using it for this video because of several reasons. Uh, number one being that I made a preview animation in version 4, and uh, the new version removed the aux particle system, which is what we need for our flatline particles. Uh, and they actually render slower for some reason, so uh, I'm not exactly a big fan of version 5. Anyway, uh, just another quick update for those who didn't know, all my master studies After Effects project file that i done for 2020 is now available on my Gumroad for free. The project file for this tutorial is also provided. Check it out in the link in the description below. Alright, let's get to the motion analysis. Let's take a look at the reference scene for the animation in real time and slower playback speed. What do you notice? So there are four things we need to create. The orb comprising of two circles and a line trail, the flashes and the bloom, and the flat split line particles, and lastly, the camera rotating in the Z axis. So that's what we'll be covering for this tutorial. So let's get started. All right, so in After Effects, in this provide project file, I already made a comp for you to start working with, and it's called 01 underscore star. Uh, it has the orb created already, so we can already get started with it. I already duplicated it under demo two, and uh, let's first of all, let's create a new now object, and we're gonna call this uh, parent underscore all, and we're just gonna put it above the all elements, and we're gonna select everything, make everything 3D, and we are going to parent uh, all the shape layer to the all. So we're gonna use the same technique. Uh, we're gonna use an expression, uh, the same technique in my wave warp flying all tutorial, and uh, all we have to do is just open up the position instead of man, you know, have it animating it key uh, keyframe. We're just gonna use a wiggle function. So option click on the stopwatch, and usually we will use wiggle twenty fifty, right? So and then, but then by using just these two values, it kind of becomes very jittery. So if we were to add in two more values, uh, a three more values actually. So I'm gonna type in comma point one point one, and then time. And I'm also going to change the value to, uh, let's see, 1.5 and then 500. And you can notice, right, our wiggle, you know, we have randomized movement and it's, uh, and it's still, let me, let me just get rid of this camera for now. I forgot to delete that. So, yeah, we get this randomized movement, but there's no keyframe at all. And I can easily, let's just say, reposition this. Oops, I'm going to grab the op, right, and just reposition it maybe further back. And you know it's still going on, wiggling uh, along that area, okay. So this uh, we only see the all for the first like uh, eighty five frames, so that's why it stopped here. Okay, so the animation for the all is done pretty quick, right? And next of all, we next thing we're gonna do is to create the flashes that comes by, and we are going to create a new now object again, and we'll call this parent underscore lights. And then we'll go select our ellipse tool over here on the top. And we're going to draw a large oval shape at the bottom. And then we are going to uh, just color it uh, in some sort of like pink, you know, bright pink or magenta. And I'm going to go into my effects and preset panel and drop in a fast block blur and uh, set the settings to 200 and by 300. And then we can just rename this layer. Let's call it light. Uh, let's spot, yes, and then let's just put it beneath, and we can set the blending mode to add. All right, so uh, the next thing we can do instead of we can parent it to the parent light and then um, and parent light and then have it go over uh, from right to left to simulate like uh, a moving background. So, an easier way to do this is actually a simple expression. I'm just going to animate this now over here, this parent. So let me just uh, press P or press, uh, you know, click on the stopwatch to get a keyframe and put it at the start. I'm going to set it somewhere around here on the right hand side. And then I'm going to go down actually 10 frames, 
I need to delete the first keyframe. Uh, and then let me just zoom out. And then I'm going to just move this now. Okay. And then I am going to press P on my uh, spotlight, option click on the stopwatch, and pick whip to the position. And we're going to add in uh, just uh, on top of this uh, expression, just type in value at time, time minus endpoint. So what this does is that it's going to copy the keyframes, uh, the, the values from our parent, right? But it will only start in effect based on our endpoint. So if I, you know, if, so as this, uh, as this move, you, you can see as this, uh, even though the keyframes start at, you know, the first 10 frame, our animation only happen when uh, at the endpoint of our layer. So it's a very simple expression. Um, that said, we can actually command D, duplicate this, right? And shift this backwards and then change the color to uh, cyan. So you can see like it goes like that. So I only have two keyframes to worry about. Okay, so the one thing to note is that notice I can't shift the Y location. So let's make some modification to this expression. So this will be for the, let's make this a variable, X is equals to, and then semicolon Y is equals to value square bracket zero, uh, one, and then semicolon, and then square bracket, oops, square bracket X comma Y. All right. So I got an error because uh, this is referring to, you know, the two values. Only, I only want the first value of x, so just make sure you put a square bracket 0 at the end. And that should solve the problem. And now I can just move this left and right. And if I try to move it, uh, I can move it up and down, but I can't move it left and right because it's based on uh, our parents, uh, our now layer position. I'm going to command C on the position and paste it onto the second spotlight. And you can, you can play it. And I'm going to shift this over here. As you can see, I need to just push this now layer a little bit to the left hand side because our oval shape is really big. So let's make it about negative 1,500. Let's play it. There we go. And we just maybe just want to space out the lights. So we have one coming in and then the second one. Next, let's duplicate those two spotlight and then just push it back in the, uh, you know, in the timeline. And let's see, so we can see the magenta first, and let's push this one further back, and have the cyan one come up, and the third one, we should see the magenta one again, and then the cyan one again at the end. Maybe I can put this further back. Let's play it. Yeah, nice. It could even be spread out, so it's up to you. So, I mean, this just makes, uh, you know, our, our life easier, only having two keyframes. So. If I want to change the speed or make it slower, I can just drag the keyframe or I can make it faster by making it, having it five frames like that. Uh, so I'm going to just keep it around 10 frames. And let's see. So I'm going to just also position this oval a little bit towards the bottom. And this one, same goes for this, this, uh, this, the cyan one. Okay. And one last one. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So we are done with just, you know, simulating part of the background. And now for the fun part is where we create the speed lines and we get to use a uh, traffic particular. Okay, I'm just going to trim the out point here, save my work file, and we're going to new, create, solid, and I'm going to just name this P uh, for particular and then go to effects and preset panel and type in particular, drop it on. And then you can see a bunch of particle. I'm going to solo it for now. And then I'm going to open up the designer tab. And this will allow me to kind of interactively, uh, you know, change the setting, kind of see like what I'm creating, uh, well, what sort of particle system I'm creating. So I'm going to, first of all, change this to box. And then after that, uh, we are going to change the uh, XYZ individual. So we're going to create like an a, like a emitter coming from the right hand side. And so let's make it about, let's do about 600. And we want it to be tall, so 2000 and kind of wide Z axis. And let's head down to, let's re reduce it down to about 30 particles for now. Go to motion, and we are gonna rotate it in the, negative, in the Y axis by 90. And we're, we're gonna increase the velocity down to negative 500. 
and reduce the velocity random and change the direction to directional. So it's going into yeah one side. Uh, let's actually change the rotation to 90 instead of uh, negative 90. So it's coming from the right hand side. And I think we can zero out everything. So velocity from motion, zero. Velocity distribution, zero. And direction of spread, zero. So it's just straight going on to the right hand side. Go into particle uh, type and we're going to reduce the batter down to zero. And we can use sphere. And uh, we can go into the color. And we are going to uh, create random color, right? But using random color, uh, we're gonna create some sort. Of, there'll be some sort of gradation. So kind of, kind of cheat the the color creation. What we can do is we can select. Um, let's see. Let's select the second preset over here, and we can double click on it. So let's create our first color, cyan, and then uh, actually let me increase the particle so you guys can see it clearly. And then the, for the white one. Let's change it to, you know, like a magenta. So something purple. Uh, let's make it more reddish, something like that. And if we just put the, you know, uh, the colors close together, right? There'll be no gradation. You either pick the, the random grid color pick will be either, you know, purple or cyan. Uh, and then we are going to create another one, create a white one. Uh, so we can make sure you have the fourth one to kind of, kind of just uh, push the white, uh, make it uh, the white. Make sure there's no gradation, you know, by creating another purple one over here. So we're gonna switch everything to white, and just put it very close. So we get three colors, and and then the white one will be the the we'll have the least because you know it's only this portion of the gradient. And once we've done that, we act, let's go into the right hand side, and we are going to use the aux. So uh, like as I mentioned earlier. Uh, the aux system is not present in track code, uh, particular version five, so it actually combines with the primary with all the system over here. Uh, just keep that in mind. So we're gonna set it continuously, and you can see where we have some particle going on, and we are gonna set the live to be about let's see, let's do three three second, three second, and particle type we can keep that reduce the feather. Reduce the feather down to zero. And then, uh, most importantly, we need to go down to the color and set it to, uh, yes, let's go into color from random and set it to 100. And the color from me to 100. So that's why it looks like, you know, it, it, when we increase the particle count, let's go back on top over here. Uh, where is it? Yes, so instead of 10 particles per second, Make 150, and then we get you know straight lines that looks flat. And uh, let's go back to the emitter type, uh, and then set it to one particle, because that's too much right now. Actually, no. Let's keep it at 100 for now, because so we can see it, and then we're gonna reduce it later. Uh, but what we wanna do is to go into the size and the rotation. Actually, reduce the size of the main particle to zero, so we just get one straight line. Okay. And it's kind of slow right now, so let's go to gravity and increase the physics time factor by 100. So you can see it's like, you know, a hyperspeed. And let's position our emitter uh, to the left hand side. So let's do uh, 2000, let's round everything up, 500. And right now we have too many particles. We're gonna animate the particles uh, per second uh, later. So we can set it to two for now. See, where you get this hyperspeed look. And then, so that's pretty much done. We're pretty much done with the flat particles. And what we can do is that we can duplicate this system and we're just gonna create our big ones. So if you go into, I'm gonna apply, click uh, apply for now. So if you go into the reference, right, you can see they also have like big, uh, very big particles or like uh, speed lines coming at you. Uh, but they're very little, so we can just create another particle system uh, that is responsible for those speed lines. So let's go back into our demo and go inside designer. So in this duplicate system too, let me turn on the first one. And what we can do is it's kind of let's make it a little bit slower. So physics time factor seventy five, and for the color, right? Uh, let's actually you know set it to be at start. 
and we can change this to uh, another color. So let's make it, you know, cyan again like that. And we can go into the oxygen and set the, let's see, let's set the size. Let's go down and set the size to be about 15. All right, so it's really big. And one last thing we need to do is that there's kind of too many particles. So we can set emit probability to be about 20. Oops, about 20 right here. So that's not so much. Even so, it looks kind of a lot. So you can either change the emitter type, you know, uh, maybe down to just one, or you can just adjust it from aux. There's a lot of uh, options uh, to how you can design your particle system. So I found I found that this is the the easiest way. And let's turn on our master system. And there we go. We have our flat particle uh, lines shooting at you. So let's click apply. And let's turn on everything now. So the reason why we made those uh, our AWP 3D layer is because, you know, Tropical Particular is 3D. So we're going to custom view, right? And I'm going to use a camera, uh, Shift C. You can see, you know, it's kind of positioned uh, in, in 3D space like that. Okay. All right. So let's go back to active, active camera. And... Uh, so let's start to kind of animate the speed lines going increasing in particle size. So what it starts to happen around at the back around bloom. So at about frame one one two. Uh, so let's go into let's go into uh, the particle system over here. Press UU, and we get all the, all the modified properties. And what we need is uh, we need a particle per second. Uh, we also need the color of a light which is over here, uh, let's see, where is it? Color of a life, we're gonna change the color from uh, to white. And we need the ox uh, life, so it's over, where is it? There's so many things over here. Um, the ox, the ox, okay. Maybe I'll just go into the effects panel and find it. Uh, so let's go into show system, select master system. Right, and let's see, not under particle. Let's go under the aux system. Yes, found it. And we increase the life, so it, you know everything becomes uh, it becomes it lasts longer and won't disappear. And that should be it. That should be it. So we just need those three three properties to animate, and let's set it. You know, keyframe down at um, at frame one one one. You know where it starts to increase, and let's go down to frame one hundred forty. You know, so basically about a second uh, and a half. And we're going to increase the particle uh, per second to 100. I'm going to save first because using a trap code can sometimes crash your computer. So do save regularly. So uh, 100, uh, maybe we might even need more. Let's do 300. And then let's set particle size down to 10. I mean, particle life to 10. Yes. And last of all, let's go into... Uh, we need to change the color. So under open up color over life in the effects and preset panel, and we're just gonna you know uh we just need a white color. So grab the the, the color swatches and drag down, and you can delete it. So click and drag down, click and no we need the white one. So uh let's click the purple one and delete it, and you can see yes everything becomes white, and uh we're gonna create. Let's say Command Y to create a, a white solid, and let's call this uh, white out. And sorry, I forgot to change the solid settings to white. So you can open up the solid settings with Command Shift Y. And I'm just gonna put it at the back of my particular like that. So we don't really have too much particle to kind of fill everything out. We just need to get to the good point, And then after that, it just becomes white. Okay, so let's see what happens. Right, let me just trim the endpoint. Okay, so it's looking good, right? So we just need to add in uh, a glow to it. So let's go into effects and preset panel, select our particular solid, and let's type in glow. Uh, so let's see, over here, let's put in a glow, and I'm gonna close particular, and let's set a keyframe uh, down for, we want it to be at the brightest, 
uh, at the end. So let's set it for, to zero for the threshold and at the start, it'll be 100. So as you see, it's gonna glow even more and it'll become more saturated as it, as it, uh, you know, as it reached the end. Okay, very nice. So I'm gonna just click and uh, make this orange so you guys can see it clearly. And now let's, uh, let's add some, let's stylize, uh, you know, add some lighting effect and stylize it even more. So there is a flash, you know, like I said earlier on, like somewhere around here, you will see, yes, this flash over here, around frame 84. So you can, we can easily recreate that. It's called with a, a new solid, it's called flash. And I'm just gonna make the color, you know, cyan and click OK. And I'm gonna draw a mask uh, on the on the right hand side. So press G. This will just G twice, and you can get a feather tool, or you can just click uh, click and hold on the pen tool. You can access the mask feather tool, right? And you can actually just feather it from here. You know, instead of using uh, the the feather the feathering um, the feathering uh, properties from over here. So we're gonna set the mass uh, mode to none, and we're gonna go into effects and preset panel and drop in a fill. And so, and this allow us to just color, you know, just the mass with a specific color. Uh, you know, instead of having two solids to do this thing, we can just, you know, use do it in one solid. So that's pretty nifty. Um, and let's position this, this, this uh, circle a little bit, you know, to in the within the com. And let's command shift H to hide the control. And you know, let's move the endpoint down to the bloom. So it only blooms about, let's see, about three frames. So let's trim the out point over here. So you're gonna flash, actually no, two frames. And we're gonna create a black solid. So uh, let's change command Y to create the new solid and click okay. And we're just gonna trim it to this marker over here and duplicate it and do it again, right? So, you know, just having this marker will speed things up uh, for this animation process. And then, yes, that should be all the lighting effects we uh, we need, right? So it's very subtle, but it works. And let's see, next we need to just, you know, and uh, if you notice in the video, right, when you get this like kind of um, glow is directional glow from the particle lines and we can create that uh, by creating uh, let's go right click new adjustment layer and we can just call we're gonna put it uh, right below this the whiteout and we can just call this zoom and we're gonna put it right after uh, the orb disappears so somewhere around frame 84 85 and we are going to add in a CC radio fast blur. And you can set the blend, you can set the amount to be about 30 and then set it to brightest. Uh, so I'm not seeing any effects. Oh, because the particle is, is on top. So let's make sure you put it at the bottom. And I'm gonna rename this Zook to Zoom. So that should solve our problem. You can see we get that directional blur, right? And you, you know you can increase it to go crazy, but 30 seems to be the magic number. We can even set the blending mode to add. Um, next, we need to create this. There's some sort of uh, ram at the, at the back, uh, circular gradient glowing. So we can go create a new a solid, command Y. And let's call this, let's call this uh, circle and we're gonna make this like a dark blue, like that, click OK. And I'm just gonna draw a mask with the ellipse tool and bring up uh, my guides. So if you click in the center and hold Command, so on Windows, it's Control, you can just you know uh, create an ellipse from the center and hold Shift, so it'd be a perfect circle. So us align it something like that will be fine. And we can put it uh, below Put it below, all the way at the bottom. And we're just gonna add in a CC radio fast blur as well. Set it to brightest and set it to 60, right? And I'm gonna command shift H to hide the controls and hide my guides. And then we can now open up the mask path, press MM. 
and then we're gonna set the mass better to let's see 150 will be good and then expand it by 125 so something like that uh maybe you can just play around with the with the radio blur and see what happens but uh, it's just something subtle for for this for this scene and let's see now it's it's kind of looking too bright uh, let me drop in a fill so we can easily access the color controls and drop in the fill and change the color to something dark blue something subtle like that and let's change the hue that should be good for now and we can drop a glow let's drop a glow and set the settings to be about 20 and increase the glow radius to let's increase the glow radius to 500 yeah and again we gotta just re make it even darker since it's looking so bright right now so something like that yeah and click ok um let's see I still feel it's a little bit too bright so let's reduce the opacity uh, i think that's fine nope it's still too bright so I am going to just make this even darker. So something like, uh, make it, yeah, something subtle. Let's do it 18. Okay, that should be good. Oh, also make sure you have the endpoint of this background circle, right? Uh, after the orb disappear. So it only appear at the back. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. And now we just need to add some camera rotation. And we can go into our, uh, let's right click, you know, in our timeline and create new camera. And let's make it one note camera, preset 35 millimeter, click OK. And we are going to put a keyframe down, you know, I have this red mark over here. Uh, let's get our rotation, press R, and we're going to set the Z rotation from 0 to 25, like that. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is to just add noise. So let's hit Command Option Y. And we are going to just, let me just put this adjustment layer on top. And let's name this. Uh, oops, let me just rename this adjustment layer, Noise. Right, and let's go into my effects and preset panel, type in Noise. Um, let's see, and over here, let's set it to be about 30. And that should be... That should be good. We we don't we shouldn't have to uh, do much. And but oh, we just have to change the blending mode to soft light. So you know, soft light always makes everything uh, look uh, better. And let's play. It. And that's it, and we're done. And that's how you recreate this hyperspeed shot from uh, Flat White Motion TEDx video. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, you can download this project file and try it yourself. I also included my preview animation so you can reference my process. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share, subscribe so this tutorial can get to more people. I hope you love this master study. As always, if you made something with this tutorial, please tag me on Instagram at ddesmondu because I love to see what you came up with on your own. All right, that's all I have for you guys. I'll see you next time.